Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, here's some old war stories about astounding tales of the Afghan National Army. So a whole bunch of people that I know and I kind of know and in the comments have been asking me about my take. I did a community post about it. I basically said, you know, I extended my enlistment so I could go to a place that was literally known as the Graveyard of Empire, so I didn't expect any lasting change from it, anything we did. We did some good there, uh, and everyone in my squad came home alive. Obviously, it's a part of my life, but um, uh, everything things are uh, that people are being shocked by right now, it was really obvious to me in like 2008, 2009. Uh, so uh, I went to Afghanistan in the fall of 2008. I was actually coming from another unit, the unit I went to. They had beat me there by like uh, a month and a half, and we started a FOB over in uh, Maywand. It's about 80 kilometers away from Kandahar. We were the first people there. We started it from literally just an expanse of moon dust. That's this like talcum powder uh, dust. And uh, we built it up. We built it up from a couple of tents to a uh, functioning you know, uh, base with, uh, you know, uh, not just a helipad, but a whole, you know, landing field for helicopters. We uh, did um, daily patrols. Uh, we did operations, you know, basically go farther out, you know, go with the helos or go with MRAPs. It was a, you know, pretty full, busy, productive employment. Unfortunately, the unit that replaced us about a year after we left had a major incident. They basically lost the faith of everyone. I mean, when we left, it was like copacetic, like it was completely freaking peaceful. We, you know, we uh, nobody really like overstepped things. You know, it was it was we were professional, and it was peaceful. I remember, you know, some of the younger soldiers complaining. It's like, oh, it's boring. It's like <laughs> we did our job. That's it. That's that's how it works. You go to a war zone, and when you leave, and it's boring, you're successful. Um, uh, so, uh, but um, it was like like 2010 so we we went back in 2009 and then like 2010 2011 i remember there was like a rolling stone article about this kill team and i looked at it where it was i was like oh jesus that's great you just lost like all of the goodwill uh that we built up but uh i did work with the afghan uh, national army not a lot we usually just you know operate in our own area uh, Canada was actually in charge of Kandahar at the time, but we didn't, you, you have your AO, you know, you patrol different areas of it, and then sometimes you'll go do operations, you know, farther out um, and for major missions, but most of it is just daily patrols. Uh, so in the daily patrols, didn't really see the ANA at all. Sometimes they would have a checkpoint on the, the ring road, um, but that was nothing major when we did capture uh Terry's. <laughs> we didn't fireboard those mammer jammers. We handed them over to the local police, and then they basically sat in jail until somebody bribed somebody's cousin, and then they were let go. Uh, those were for like the more you know low level. You know, the major ones would go to Kandahar, Bagram, wherever from there. Uh, so in the daily patrols, we did not interact with the you know ANA almost ever. Uh, you would sometimes see them. Um, uh, you would see them interacting with the ANP, uh, the police. But um, not really anything. Now, on operations, uh, we did, we were near them, <laughs> essentially. What I'm trying to say is they were completely fucking useless. And more than useless, they were a hindrance. So the thing about the, um, the and this is, again, this is 2008-2009 era knowledge, is that you call it an army, but it's really more like pirates. You know, they always talk about, oh, the captain, you know, makes you walk the plank. The captain would walk the plank. The captain had to keep the crew happy. So the deal with you know the officers is you know people would just wander off if you were too mean or you let them on too dangerous of a mission. You didn't feed them. You didn't you know let them go home in time to plant crops and then come back three months later. So the officers were in charge, but uh, basically consensus decided things. Um, I remember one time we went on an operation. This one was actually by uh, MRAPs. Uh, so uh, usually when we do an operation, you go with uh, helos. And we got out there to, uh, I forget the name of it, but it was over there like at the, you know, the foot of the mountains. And <laughs> it's like halfway in between. Um, and uh, we were patrolling, and it was hot. It was really, really, really hot. Now, my... Uh, 
platoon had some advantages. Number one, we had a really kick-ass platoon sergeant who before we pushed, we, when we were at Kandahar, before we pushed out to Fob Ranrod uh, over by Maywand, he made us do PT at noon, the hottest time of the day in the blazing sun running around Kandahar airfield. Everyone else would do PT at six in the morning before the sun came up, it was nice and cool. Uh, so we got in really, really good shape. The other thing is we had another platoon who got in some trouble because some morphine went missing. So they got put on lockdown, which means we ended up patrolling our area and their area. So we were like the patrol champs. We could patrol anywhere in any conditions. But this was rough. I mean, it was really, really hot. The other uh, platoons in the company, the, the morphine platoon, they ended up getting to patrol again. Everyone else started having you know, heat casualties and having to slow down, and, and we just did. But it was freaking rough. And at one point, you know, we would say we would get to a crossroads, and our officers would talk to their officers through a turp, and they would say, we're going to go over here, you go over there. And they, would, they, would just, they wouldn't do shit. They'd check, like, two freaking houses and sit down. The worst one was, again, this was hot. This was the worst heat I've ever experienced, you know, operational on a patrol. And finally, we're going back to lunch, and we see the freaking ANA. And they're all in a, in a river because this is, a, you know, the base of a, of a mountain. So there was, you know, nice river. And uh, they were just, just splashing each other, just having a, a good old time. <laughs> um, another time before that, we went on to a, an operation. This was like northern into like, like the real mountain ranges, not like at the base of a mountain, but surrounded by mountain ranges. We went out there by Helos and we went to this fort and it was sketchy as Oh, hook. Uh, the soldiers there were essentially pirates. They were feral. Uh, they, they never collected their brass, so all their towers literally just had thousands of, you know, expended uh, uh, shells right next there. And we went in there, and we were like, who are these guys? This is, these are like, they look like pirates. Like, like they're like feral. Um, and so they're like, well, they're kind of like soldiers, but they're also kind of like a border patrol. It's like, sir, we're in the middle of the country. It's like, they okay, okay. See, so they extort everyone who comes through this pass, but they're kind of, you know, soldier-ish. Uh, so uh, the main things I remember about that is they didn't do shit for their work at all. We did freaking everything. Um, they had some sort of wire stretched across uh, an area, and we were driving an ATV through there, and then I saw it, and it was gonna like just get the guy right on the broken throat. So I grabbed the soldier who was driving and pushed him down so he wouldn't get that. The other one is that uh, since, you know, we were going to bring them food and ammo and all type of stuff. So they uh, airdropped these giant pellets, you know, on parachutes. And they asked what it was. And we said, you know, this is, this is food. And they said, uh, <laughs> I'll never forget this because we had this super badass, like, you know, uh, uh, not platoon sergeant, uh, squad leader. Uh, ranger tab everything and uh they said uh we're not gonna go help you because that's woman's work <laughs> so so we went out there and this this staff sergeant was hot he was pissed so we went out there and we had to set up security and then the wind blew the wrong way so again i remember just running and trying to scream and the wind was so loud nobody could hear me so i had, had to get because basically like literally like a literal ton of i think it was onions almost smashed this, you know, uh, 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 saw gunner and his assistant gunner, just smashed them to death. So um, they didn't help. <laughs> they were feral. They were freaking useless. We went on one other ones where it was a different group. They were more professional. Uh, but the thing that was just so uh, kind of um, strange was the constant discussions. It's like, do you ever have some of your friends who are very like, uh, like they treat their kids like equals, like they'll discuss things. It's like, you should go to bed. Well, I would like to stay up. Well, why do you think you should stay up? Well, this and that. And you know, sometimes there's like, this is your bedtime, go to sleep. Um, but like everything was a discussion. So even with the more professional ANA, the time it would take for the, you know, the higher officers to talk to the lower officers, to talk to, talk to the higher NCOs, to talk to the lower NCOs, and people were just coming and going. It was, it was, it was very non-military. You would see p people wander off. And it was like, where's that guy going? Oh, he's sleepy, or he's going to go smoke, or uh, he needs to talk to his cousin who's in another unit. It's like, 
do an operation here. <laughs> could you could you maybe concentrate or something like that? So at the very, very end, um, and again, this is 2009, we were bringing them on for like formal classes. And that was better. Um, but it still wasn't great because like there, a military needs to be like, there's like fundamental things in a military. Like you can't go AWOL, you have to follow orders. Everyone should have the same gear and the same weapons and the same ammo. And it just, we would give them stuff, but there wasn't any sense of ownership or, you know, oh shit, you know, I lost my helmet. If you gave an ANA soldier a helmet and he lost it, he would just kind of smile. Like, I don't know, like, like I'm a farmer. Like I'm, I had no training. Like, what do you expect? I'm a farmer. Like it was basically the farmers who could read. Okay. You're a soldier now. Um, and again, it wasn't like a full time. I wouldn't even call it like national guard. It's like, you're going to sign up for three years or you just might leave and nobody's ever going to look for you. And then you can come back like a year later and maybe like somebody will like punch you, but then you'll be fine. Like it was, it wasn't any kind of professionalism. So there wasn't anything where I left and I was like super hopeful. Honestly, I just kind of put it out of my mind. I mean, if you notice most of my, you know, military stories are just like garrison stuff, just like funny stuff that happened in training or with my friends. Like, um, at some point, you know, especially when you're patrolling the same area every day, it's, you know, it's, it's, you kind of know what to expect. You see the same things. Um, but I never left with, oh, and our hope is in you. It's just like, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> I did my time, you know? Uh, so it was, you know, we created some good stuff for a while. We would, you know, uh, you know, uh, have a construction crew build a school and then we would go, you know, someplace and then come back two weeks later and just, it just had all been destroyed. Not even by the Taliban, just they, they didn't want to go to school. Um, they wouldn't wreck like, you know, uh, water, you know, a, a pump, a well, but uh, there just wasn't a lot of care. <laughs> like uh, they have ancient ways. They've been invaded a bunch of times. They've been occupied a bunch of times. It's you just wait it out. You know, at the time it seems like a long time, but 20 years, that's not even an entire generation. So they just waited it out and nobody uh, really fought. Um, you know, uh, the supplies are so bad that the Taliban could literally say like, why are you gonna fight? You're not even being paid. And they're like, yeah, I'm not being paid. Well, it's like, well, you disappear for three months at a time. <laughs> you know? Well, I'm a farmer. You know, are you going to go plant my fields? No. So uh, I did not have any good experiences. I didn't have actually the thing where they were swimming, where we were all almost passing out that I got legitimately angry. Also, I also I got pretty angry, but I was also laughing when they said it was women's work. But that staff sergeant, he wow, that, that was pretty uh, tense. But um, uh, nothing really good to say. I'm not really surprised. I mean, I'm surprised that the whole country collapsed in a week. You know, usually these things, there's a little bit of, you know, uh, fighting. I mean, Vietnam, uh, it went for like two years, you know, uh, uh, you know, after we left. But this was just, just pretty much just collapse uh, right away. Uh, I know people some talk about, you know, oh, it was, it was a waste. And, and I, ah, that's not really my philosophy. You go there, you can't change the whole world. You can, you can be, you know, good on your patrol, good on your shift, good on your whatever, your PT, your rifle range, and that's about all you can do. You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, at some point they do have to uh, take care, and they decided they, they really didn't, they, they didn't want it. They didn't want that smoke, so they just, you know, kind of uh, just let the Taliban uh, take over. Uh, so that's it. Story time's over. <laughs>